Hi there, this is Srikanth Sari. So, in this uh, lesson, we are going to learn about uh, so how to build uh, a class uh, for an employee. Okay. So, in the last uh, couple of lessons, uh, we have learned about uh, the various uh, ways to design a class and uh, to have to set the express files and uh, uh, to define methods, uh, also known as uh, member functions in C++. Okay. So now we are uh, going to focus on the more classic example uh, like uh, real time uh, uh, scenarios so like uh, building a class for an employee in the next subsequent lessons a class for a student okay so let me launch the ID we know that we are using a uh, Visual Studio 2013 Express for Windows desktop so let me get a new project here so file new project Okay, so let me uh, name my project as uh, click the general and empty all the standard procedure. Or let me name my project as employee, or let's say employee class. Okay, so just just creates an uh, empty uh, directory structure in the solution explorer here. So let me take a new dot uh, cpp file. Let's take uh, the source files folders, uh, the source files folder. Let's right click and add a new item, code file, dot cpp, and let's say uh, so employee dot cpp, whatever you wanted. Employee dot cpp here. Okay. So Visual Studio uh, creates us a new uh, blank dot cpp file. So let, first let me add a uh, couple of header files which were most most essential. I was stream as conio.h although not necessary okay so uh, so first take uh, a class uh, before that let's add this using namespace study also so it was stream we were missing something here so first let us take this using namespace study very standard thing and now let's build our class here so let's say class uh, the name of the class is going to be employee okay so as we have said so automatically the class uh, the ending of the class syntax is parenthesis followed by the semicolon here okay so what you're going to do is let's take some uh, private data members in our class employee let's say typically an employee consists of an emp number so that's what we are going to take in the form of a variable here int emp number let's say care uh, name of 20 or 30 or 50 whatever you wanted according to your uh, requirements uh, typically uh, an employee consists of a salary also let's say float uh, cell okay so these are the very basic details of any employee uh, class you are going to build here okay so let's uh, define our methods let's say void get emp so details so void get emp details so it's, it's going to be the name of our method here and let's define another method also uh, let's say void uh, put emp details or show so meaningful names is what um, expected from any uh, kind of uh, programmer or uh, a student uh, to you have to keep in mind that whatever you are going to implement uh, should reflect uh, at the if the outside person or a third person looks into your code uh, he should get an idea that you are uh, intended uh, to write that you have written this method uh, to do specific tasks here okay so as soon as he looks into your code, uh, it should be readable and uh, uh, very focused on what uh, what's your implementation is, okay? So that's the reason. It's always a good practice to give very meaningful names to your methods, not just A, B, or uh, foo, bar, and bash, something like that. So first, let us have our uh, very basic print of statement. Sorry, <laughs> since we are in C++, we need to use this yot uh, to standard output, uh, to send output to the standard output, which is uh, monitor. So let's say, uh, so enter the employee number something like that right so enter the employee number let's say cm okay emp number here okay and let's take a zero statement once again slash and slash t enter the employee name Enter the employee name. C 
see name here okay? and uh, let's say another uh, sure statement for uh, just grabbing the input uh, for salary so enter the employee salary okay so scene send here okay so we have just taken uh, uh, grab the input from the keyboard uh, so for that we have designed this uh, so now we are looking into the very classic and basic example for an employee class okay so this is going to be a mere example uh, to understand our class concept here okay so private data so whatever the data you need to hide from the user uh, which is also known as a data abstraction concept you need to keep under the private section here so whatever uh, uh, methods or uh, operations we perform on data on that data you need to keep them in the public section here so such that the user will be user of the programmer will be able to access these methods outside the class here okay now let's uh, output the data so whatever we have uh, grabbed the, grab from the user let's say uh, so employee uh, details okay so just a small stupid and silly message let's say uh, see out slash and slash t excuse me uh, let's say the name of the employee so all these messages are not mandatory the name of the employee name okay so whatever the name you have taken uh, uh, inside that uh, variable okay so name we have given just name here okay so in the, in the same way you can have uh, see out slash and slash t the name uh, sorry uh, the employee number so the employee number okay so you can say EMP number, so that's what you have taken here. So EMP number. Now let's uh, take another CEOT statement, the one last last CEOT statement for uh, uh, displaying the salary, right? The salary of the employee is going to be more or less every employee has some salary. So let's say salary here, okay. So you have just taken a, a so classic example for a, we have just built a class uh, which is an example of encapsulation where the data members and uh, so data members are going to be uh, always taken in the private section the member functions or methods uh, taken in the public section so the first method uh, is used to grab the data from the user okay so now what we are going to do is uh, let's in the main method in the main function so let's create an object for our uh, employee class let's say employee e1 okay so you have just created an object and now what we are going to do is we have using the dot operator uh, we are just calling the method or member function so whatever we have taken inside the employee class here and also uh, so let's call the other mem member function also to show emp data okay so now we are done with our uh, uh, class definition the very basic class of an employee and we have just uh, uh, used call the methods using our uh, employee. So let's have a couple of comments here. Uh, member functions, member functions uh, fall under the fall under the public section. Okay. So data members. Uh, so these are going to be the data members here. So data members fall under the so private section so private section of the class okay so in the same way we have created an object for our employee class which is going to be even uh, creating an object let's have a comment well commented code is always uh, what we expect from an uh, able programmer here so creating, ob creating an object for our class employee using the class name followed by the name of the object okay so calling the member functions that's what we have done here calling the member functions so calling the member functions uh, uh, using the so calling the member functions using the object even okay 
So if you're done with our class, if you run our uh, program using the F5 button here, if everything goes well, uh, it should ask automatically call the uh, memo function and asks us for the input here. Okay, that's everything went well. So let's uh, increase the font size a bit. Um, okay, so font. Uh, so all these things are very basic and essential things here, which, have, which could have been done before the execution of the program. And now we have. Uh, uh, let's put some em uh, employee number here, and for the name, let's type my name here. Shrikanth Sari. Okay and uh, salary it's not asking here that's the reason because uh, we haven't used this uh, f plus stdn uh, after the name or else uh, one thing you do f plus stdn which is a very basic thing which would which we would do okay it's a very basic thing which we would do here okay so again i'm running the program and it's asking for employee number one and let me say the to type my name here Shrikant Sari. It's now asking uh, since we have cleared the buff buffer and the previously it would have taken the uh, enter key uh, which we have pressed after the um, entering the string here. Okay, so here we have taken some 20,000. Okay, so employee details um, just displaying here. Okay, so whatever the details we have entered, let's put let's do one more clear thing. Let's clear the screen using our system CLS. Right. Okay. Okay, so let's use this uh, system CLS here function which is specific to the Visual Studio. So, not on uh, all uh, IDEs here, which were used here. Okay, so again, I'm running the program and I'm just entering the uh, number, employee number one, and Srikan and Dasari, uh, Srikan and Dasari, and employee salary, some sort of 20,000. So, here you are. So, whatever the details you have entered. Since Srikan Dasari is not printing here, the, the reason behind that uh, because uh, so I have taken a, a single string of 50 and uh, the blank spaces were not uh, included here. So I could have taken uh, two different forms as first name or uh, uh, last name, or else, could, or, or else we can use this uh, gets, gets, fun, gets function which might not work uh, in our uh, uh, this what we call uh, uh, CLP environment. So gets name. Let's see what happens now. So no, okay. Gets yes. So it says gets yes might work here. Maybe employee. It's just skipping the name. I'm just putting the flush yesterday in the beginning here. So see whether it works. One. Okay. So we can the salary. Salary is some twenty thousand. Yes. Okay. So here uh, the normal gets s function is deprecated in our Visual Studio environment. So get s function, which is the one uh, we use instead of using the uh, scene function whenever you need to have uh, grab the input in uh, both the different forms of it. First name, last name, typically the names would be uh, followed by the first name and last name. Uh, so that's the reason we have uh, using the get, get s function here. Okay. So again, I'm doing the output for one last time here. So if you want to put uh, grab the input uh, using the gap uh, uh, when you're uh, dealing with strings, uh, so you need first name and last name, both of them. So in that cases, you need to use that uh, get s function. And get uh, underscore yes is very specific to this Visual Studio environment, uh, which I am using as an ID here. So salary, let me again uh, twenty thousand. Okay. So this is the basic stuff how to build uh, an employee class here. Okay. Uh, to summarize once again, here we have taken a, a simple employee class which consists of three data members: uh, employee name, uh, number, and float uh, salary. So here we are um, and grabbing the employee details uh, using the uh, get emp details function and show emp data. Show emp data function just uh, uh, outputs whatever the data you have entered. Okay. So in the main function, we have uh, created an object uh, E1 uh, for our uh, employee class and we have just uh, called the outputs using the dot operator. Okay. So see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.